God, God is able to do exceeding abundantly. But what do you ask, I think, according to Ephesians 3 and verse 20? Ephesians chapter 3 verse, verse 20. Verse 20. Ephesians 3 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Able to do exceeding abundantly. I will ask you a thing. It's for that reason God took Job through the pain of suffering. He may be able to understand the heart of God. God has much more to give than you ever can imagine. But in the heart of God. In a simple example, many years ago, a beggar came to me. I wanted some money. So I asked him, what do you want money, money for? He said, I am hungry, I want some food. I said to him, you come with me to a neighboring hotel, I'll pay, get, sit there and let, buy for you everything what you want. Sir, give me one rupee, I'll go away. I can you believe me? I want to get you a very nice meal today. He walked for a while and stopped there. No, sir, give me half a rupee, I'll go away. I said, please, believe me, I'm not joking with you. I want to have you a very nice meal. Not very far away. He walked for a while and again stopped. Sir, give me a quarter of a rupee. I'll go away. Again he walked. Sir, give me only one one person. Smaller than he can we have. With great difficulty, I took him to the hotel and told the hotel manager, can you give him all what he wants? Rice or chapatis or puris, whatever he wants, you give to him. I sit over here and pay the bill for you. He went on eating and eating. Whatever he wanted to eat. Then I asked, I told the hotel manager, also give him a glass of milk. After he ate sufficiently, I paid him one rupee cash also. It's also for me. We hardly believe it. You, you would have satisfied with only a small coin. But in my heart, I decided to give him much more than that. And God has much more to give us. Much more to teach us, much more to reveal to us, much more to give unto us. Of eternity, but we don't have capacity. And that's why God took Job to the big capacity of suffering. Not a punishment, but enable him to enjoy double than before. And we see further in the book of Job, in chapter 42, book of Job, chapter 42, book of Job, chapter 42, and verse 11, verse 11. Then came there unto him all his brethren, and all his sisters, and all that, all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him, and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had fourteen thousand sheep, and six thousand camels, and a thousand oxen, and a thousand she asses. He also he had also seven sons and three daughters. To give him all that, he, God took him through this affliction, this painful trial. He may have a larger capacity to receive from God's loving hand all these good things in double quantity, in double less. Now please see Book of Isaiah, chapter 48, from 10th verse. Book of Isaiah, chapter 48. Book of Isaiah, chapter 48, from 10th verse. Reading from verse 10. Isaiah 48, verse 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. And that's why God is saying, I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. That God, God's glory be fully seen to us. Please be very carefully. 48 verse again. Book of Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 10 and 11. Book of Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 10 and 11. Verses 10 and 11 again. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Verse 11. Verse 11. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? 
and i will not give my glory unto another so do never have to show forth god's full glory god will take us through a furnace of affliction some painful trial how we react in it how we behave in that way but same reason god took paul through 40 afflictions to prove how he was faithful in a new situation okay second corinthians and chapter 6 second corinthians chapter 6 second corinthians and chapter 6 second question chapter 6 from verse 4 second corinthian chapter 6 reading from verse 4 but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of god in much patience in much patience in affliction in afflictions in necessity necessities in distresses distresses in stripes in stripes in imprisonment imprisonment in troubles in tumults in labors in labor in watching in watching in fasting in fasting by pureness pureness by, by knowledge by knowledge by long suffering by long suffering by kindness by kindness by the holy ghost by the holy ghost by love unfeigned by love unfeigned by <coughs> by the word of truth by the word of truth by the power, power of god, god by the armor of righteousness right on the right hand and on the left that's it by honor and dishonor <coughs> by evil <coughs> report and good report by evil report good report as deceivers and yet true as i know and yet well known as dying and behold we live as chastened and not behold killed verse 10 as, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor yet making many. many rich as having nothing and yet possessing all things in all these situations and circumstances paul could prove god's faithfulness how god gave him extra grace to come out victorious and triumphant in all the trial, no murmur, no complaint, but thank God for it. He says, in all things, in verse, verse 4 says, in all things, but in all things approving our ourselves self. as the ministers of God. So our afflictions are intended for their purpose. People may know that we can rejoice even in poverty. We can rejoice in sickness. We can rejoice in suffering. We can rejoice in hardship. We can rejoice among the enemies, in all situations, among distresses, all kind of problems. Then the second list is 11th chapter. Second Corinthians 11th chapter. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians 11th chapter. From the verse 23. Reading from verse 23. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Reading from verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more. in labors more abundant in labors more abundant in stripes above measure in stripes above measure in prisons more frequent in prisons more frequent in death often in death often <clears throat> of the jews five times received i 40 stripes save one five times of the jews received five times 47 39 thrice was i beaten with rods Rod. once was i stoned Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. But we shall In weariness and, play, and painfulness, in watchings often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness thus you put the two list together chapter 6 and chapter 11 we have 40 40 afflictions painful affliction that paul went through not as a punishment and it's a chastisement to make him more useful for god's service to make him a source of blessing to other people that through his suffering other may courage so more joyfully so our afflictions are necessary to be chastised to be prepared of him for his full purpose and not come short of it then we see that fourth chapter second chapter 18 second chapter 
Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 18. Second Christian chapter 4 and verse 17 and 18. 17 and 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Things which are not seen, they are real things. They are eternal. To make those unseen things real to us, God will take us through these afflictions. Most of the time we were occupied with the perishing earthly things. But there are many unseen things which are more real, or you don't know. You can never learn in a school or a college or any institution. By people trial, we learn them. How law becomes to us more precious, more real, more dear through the suffering and trial. And Paul called them light affliction. Verse 17. For our light affliction is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That's why God permits these chastisements and rebukes and afflictions, whatever they may be. Now please see further. Romans chapter 8, Proverbs 16 and 17. Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. Verses 16 and 17. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joined heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may, all, we may be also glorified together. If we want, uh, want to be His joint heirs of the heavenly inheritance, then He says, we may, are we prepared for suffering also? I reckon the suffering at present time not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. Our Lord is preparing us to many full afflictions, physical affliction, trial, suffering, whatever they may be, to show forth the glory to us, and also to make us a partaker of the glory. According to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. 5, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. The, el the elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Both go together. He is a witness of the suffering, at the same time he is a partaker of the coming glory. He can't have a glory without suffering. So similarly for the power of resurrection. Second Philippians chapter 3, and verse 10. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Philippians 3, chapter 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. He wanted to know two things. First of all, to know him more intimately, and secondly, the power of his resurrection. For that he prepared to go through any suffering. Third word, tenth verse. Prepare three ten. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. The most intimate and the personal knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ comes to the suffering only. It's not by knowledge, not by book knowledge, but some suffering. How our Lord becomes more precious to us in suffering and trial. And we commit ourselves unto Him. And Paul is saying, to, to know Him, He is prepared to go to any suffering. At the same time, to receive from Him the power of His resurrection, which He needs for victory over trial and temptation, any mortal body, He is prepared to go to any suffering. They go together. All the suffering and trial. Now please see Second Corinthians again and twelfth chapter. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Second Corinthians twelfth chapter. From verse nine. Second Corinthians twelfth chapter from nine verse. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, reading from verse nine. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. You can also read from verse 7, that will help you. Um, first, second Corinthians chapter 12, 12 reading from verse 7. 
and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a throne in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I saw, besought the Lord thrice, and it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Ten. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Now the end of thirty afflictions, which he went through, he never complained. But now in this case, you see here, there was some, some thorn in the flesh, something very painful. Till today nobody knows when the thorn was. But something very painful, which God permitted in life. And for that he says, I will be the Lord three times. Please, Lord, take it the thorn away. The Lord said, My grace is sufficient for thee. That means, to teach him more about God is, is grace, he allowed the thorn in the flesh. Grace is experience, again. God's love plus mercy multiplied by eternity, that's God's grace. Undeserved love plus mercy multiplied it by eternity. To teach us about the grace, God will take us to our suffering also. Then now Paul could say very truthfully in 2 Corinthians 12 chapter and verse 10, Therefore, I take pleasure I take pleasure. He could rejoice in you know, infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ say for, when I am weak, then am I strong. To receive more strength and to, to, to receive more power in our life, God is this God's method. He allows in our life in weaknesses, in affliction, in suffering. And then we prove his faithfulness in our situation and become more strong. At the same time, you keep us humble, God allows the suffering as well. Verse 7. First, Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse yes, 7. Sir. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So to keep us humble again in this, in all this situation, God will take us to some friction, some sorrowful, some painful trial, as He knows best. So we are seeing how to come on the throne with all Jesus ties, we have to be prepared for loving rebuke, for the loving chastisement, according to Hebrews 12 chapter and 10th verse. Hebrews chapter 12, 12 verse 10. 10. Hebrews 12, 10. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Same time, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 12, what? verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth, e scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. God who loveth, he chasteneth. Show his love toward us, he must chasten us, or rebuke us, or punish us, or chastise us up to him. So God's afflictions and God's trial are intended to bring it to us God's love in the Gethsemane year, God's affection in the Gethsemane year, and God's goodness in the full year. That is the judgment. And that is the fourth step we have on the throne the Lord Jesus Christ. Going by Revelation chapter 1 and chapter 3. Chapter 3 and verse 19. Revelation chapter 3 verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Then the fourth step. To thank God for every painful affliction which we must use to keep us on the right path and to keep us rejoicing in faithfulness in all this trial. According to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 14. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 14. Verses 12 through 14. And to whom it was revealed, First Peter, that's right, chapter 
फोर सावर के टू फोर्टीन जस्ट फोर वर्ष ट्वेल्व टू फोर्टीन ट्वेल्व टू फोर्टीन बिलावट थिंग इज नॉट स्ट्रेंज कंसर्निंग द फायर ट्रायल विच इज टू ट्राई यू आज दो सम स्ट्रेंज थिंग हैपन एंड यू फॉर रिजॉइस फॉर रिजॉइस इन आस मच यू आर पार्ट टेक इयर्स ऑफ क्राइस सफरिंग दैट वेन हिज ग्लोरी शैल बी रिवील्ड ये मे बी ग्लैड ऑल्सो विद एक्सीडिंग जॉय ये वे बी रिप्रोच फॉर द नेम ऑफ क्राइस्ट हैप्पी आर ई फॉर द स्पिरिट ऑफ ग्लोरी एंड ऑफ गॉड रेस्ट अपॉन यू ऑन देर पार्ट ही इज ईवल स्पोकन ऑफ बट ऑन यूर पार्ट ही इज ग्लोरीफाइड एन अदर पर्पज फॉर गॉड अलाउज इन लाइ सफरिंग to make us partakers of the suffering of Christ not the punishment that we might be prepared also by him for our share in the glory his coming glory at the same time upon the earth he says here if you are being reproached with Christ happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of god is upon you on the part you will spoken of and to your part is glorified glorified in him through us and show for the glory to us he will take us in any situation it's up to him he's sovereign our duty is to go on thank him for his suffering jaldi we thank him for for his good deeds to us thank him for so many answer the prayer but now he says here thank him for every situation thank him for every trial thank him for every affliction thank him for every suffering every hardship praise him all the time and then we we are brought with the on the throne the fourth step Lord Jesus, may you help us to come on the throne. Shall we pray?